Okay, we're going to do the last part of aqueous equilibria, that's what's called precipitation and qualitative analysis. Um, just as a reminder, this is kind of the application piece for KSP, okay, and that's what we're going to be working on for this part. Alright, so for precipitation, it's the opposite of dissolution, right? A precipitate is when a solid is formed by, um, from two clear solutions. So this is going to come back to knowing the KSP, knowing the math, and using the Chatelier's principle to f essentially force or predict when something's going to predict, or when something's going to precipitate. So again, we can predict whether precipitation or dissolution, fancy word for dissolving, is going to occur. And we use Q again, which is the ion product, okay? So we had Q earlier when we were trying to predict if something was at equilibrium or not. Now we have Q as what we refer to as the ion product. All right, now um, it, it's equal to KSP, but it doesn't have to be at equilibrium. So here's the th same kind of thing, is that if Q is equal to K or greater than K, more reactant will form and the preci precipitation more reactant will form in precipitation until equilibrium is reached. And if Q is less than K, then more product will form, so we'll get dissolution. Because if you remember, we're dealing with the reaction that we have, like just for simplicity's sake, let's say we've got sodium chloride solid, I'm trying to draw this with the mouse here, um, is going to split into the sodium ion. Wow, I should have picked one with less letters. Okay, the sodium ion and the chloride ion. So remember, when we talk about reactant, we're talking about solid sodium chloride. And if we're talking about more product, then we're talking about the two ions. So if we can force things to precipitate as solution, or we can force things to stay dissolved in solution. Okay, so for example, a solution is prepared by mixing 750 mils of 400 times 10 to the negative third CCM nitrate, 300 mils of 2.00 times 10 to the negative second um, of our KiO3. What we're trying to answer is will this compound right here precipitate out of solution? Okay, how the heck do we do that? Well, we gotta calculate Q value and compare it to the K on the chart. Remember I showed you that chart? That was chart, oh, I think it's 15.4. I'm not sure, but it's got all the KSP values. That's what we're comparing to. Okay, so if we find what we're looking for for our Q value here is the product of these two ions. So what we're going to have is here's our product of this, or here's our molarity of the cesium, and here's our molarity of our IO3. And where this is coming from, remember this is the uh, volume, milliliters, times the molarity. So they're figuring out the moles, and we're dividing it by the new total volume. Okay, so I know this looks like a lot of numbers, but this is our new total volume. We have to raise this one to the third power, so we get a Q value equal to 5.32 times 10 to the negative second. Okay, now what we then have to do is go find the K value. K is only equal to 1.9 times 10 to the negative second. Um, it is less than Q, or Q is greater than K, so the answer is yes, it will precipitate out until equilibrium is reached. Okay. All right, now we've got a solution by mixing these two combinations. We've got magnesium nitrate and we've got sodium fluoride. We, this time we want to find the concentration where magnesium and fluoride are at equilibrium, and here's our KSP value. Okay, so what we need to figure out is whether the concentration of the ions are high enough to cause precipitation first. So again, we've got to find Q and compare it to K. So here's our calculation for our Q, va Q values. Again, I know this looks kind of like ugly math, but this is the volume times the molarity, and you have over the new total volume. So that gives us a Q value of 1.46 times 10 to the negative fifth. And remember, this one is raised to the second power because you get two fluoride ions for every one magnesium. Q is greater than K, so it will shift left, so the precipitation does occur. Okay, so that's the first step. and um, so we are going to have precipitation. Now the question becomes, will all of it precipitate out, or will s the answer is no. So we have to figure out how much is created using stoichiometry, then how much ion is left over using the ice chart. So we're going to go back to actually doing a stoichiometry chart first, 
and then an ice chart second. Um, very similar to doing the acid base problems that we were doing where we had a chemical reaction first and then what's left over. So how much will be used, I think that should have been past tense, if it goes to completion. Well first of all here is my stoic chart. Again I'm writing with the mouse here so um, my stoichiometry chart, I'm going to start right there. Um, we got 1.50 millimoles that came from our, con our uh, the initial concentration times the initial volume. We've got 25.0 millimoles and this one doesn't count. The reason it doesn't count is because it's solid. Okay, So some of it will dissolve how much is left in solution. Um, this is the next thing that we have to figure out. Now we go to the ice table. Okay, So what we have left over, Okay, we don't have any magnesium left. So to start with rather because it all was used up in solution. And so then what we have to do for this one is, let me get this out of the way, we've got our 22 point millimoles divided by 400 milliliters um, which was the new total volume. We've got plus 2x. Me, sorry we didn't have any magnesium from the uh, stoichiometry but we will see if we have some left because it's going to be that x value right there. Maybe. Okay, so here's our calculation. We've got KSP of magnesium fluoride, which we would have to go find from the chart. We go ahead and we calculate both of these in there. Um, we end up with an X value of 2.1 times 10 to the negative sixth. So that automatically is my magnesium. And then in order to find my fluorine, you take that, the, if I go back to the ice chart here for just a second, to find fluorine it would have been 5.5 times negative 2 plus 2x and since that's so small it doesn't really change the significant figures so therefore my final concentration of fluorine is also going to be 5.5 times 10 to the negative 7th okay and um, I'm actually going to stop here and then if we have time we'll talk about qualitative analysis but um, I doubt it for right now okay hope that helps